So after playing around with the precipitation data and trying to create your own ARIMA model, some of you are probably feeling there's a lot of different options here for the orders of the different autoregressive, moving average, seasonal components, differencing. How do you know you've got the right combination of, of orders? And the truth is that fitting an ARIMA model is in many ways more of an art than a science. Fitting an ARIMA model, model is it's an iterative process where you fit it and you look to see, have you finally gotten that combination that seems to suck up all of that autocorrelation structure or not? And so you can do this by hand, fit a model, look at the AIC, fit another model, compare AIC, and continue on that way until you find the model with the appropriate or structure of orders for these different components that gives you the lowest AIC value. There's also a function called AutoRemo, which I've mentioned before, which helps automate this process to some extent. We're gonna play with it. It has a ton of different bells and whistles that you can modify because even with AutoRemo, it has to constrict things as a starting place. Let's play with AutoRemo and see what it thinks the best fitting model for our data looks like. So I'm gonna go over to our R script and I'm gonna create uh, auto arima uh, to store all of our model information in equal. And now I'm going to take the forecast package and I'm going to specify the auto.arima function. And we'll just give it our time series object and see what it does with it. Let's look at the summary of the model first and just to see what model it even, what model structure it even settled in on. So we'll do the summary function and give it auto arima. Okay. So as a reminder, auto arima has a constraint on how much of the possible state space um, it can conduct. And so given its limited range of state space that it explored, this is the model that it decided fit the best. Its best model had a moving average component with an order of one, not the order of two that we were playing with. There is indeed a seasonal signal in the data that it is soaking up, but it is using a autoregressive model, not a moving average model in order to incorporate that a seasonal autocorrelation structure. And then it also found an autoregressive signal of an order of two in the data. And this combination of processes was what it found it best in incorporating all of that order autocorrelation structure in the data. And let's check the residuals and see what those look like uh, coming out of the, the model. So we're going to do uh, the forecast package and call the check residuals function. And we'll give it our model object, which is auto -ima. So here are our residuals coming from our model. We can confirm by looking up here that this is indeed the model that we wanted, order of two for the seasonal autoregressive, only a one for the moving average. So that is the model that we ran. And let's look down here in the ACF function. And what we can see is that we're generally getting a fairly good fit uh, with this model structure, except for this really long lag that still is sticking around. In auto arima, it has a default setting that it has a maximum number of seasonal cycles that it looks for, which is two. And of course, 36 months is three seasonal cycles. So what we can do now is having seen that there's still this, this additional uh, year of seasonal cycle signal that seems to be in our data, we can go back to auto arima and now tell it, no, 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 we want you to now look at up to three seasonal cycles in the data. And then tell us, given that, that new maximum seasonal cycle to explore, uh, what is the best fitting model now? So let's go over to our R script and let's, let's do that. So we're going to create a new object, which I'm going to call AutoArima3. And we'll call the forecast package and the AutoRima function. And once again, we'll give it our time series, NDVI time series object. Um, but now we're going to say max P equal three. So what does max P stand for? Well, we need to step back for a second and discuss the shorthand that is used for uh, specifying autoregressive versus moving average orders versus differencing orders and how we specify those in uh, both a seasonal context and in a non-seasonal context. So I'm just going to take these notes in our R script instead of jumping over to a whiteboard for this. So when we're specifying in these models the number of orders for the 
non-seasonal component of an arema and the seasonal component of arema, there are certain letters that we tend to use. And it goes like this. A lowercase p for that autoregressive component, the t minus one, the t minus two, this non-seasonal autoregressive signal. A lowercase d for that differencing component, and then a lowercase q for that moving average component. When we're doing the seasonal specification, the letters that we tend to use to denote these different components are the capital versions of those letters. So a capital P for the seasonal autoregressive signal, a capital D for the seasonal differencing signal, and a capital Q for the seasonal MA signal. And so autoarema sets some default maximum limits of what order numbers it will look at for each one of these components. So I'm gonna give you what the default maximum order is for each one of these autocorrelation components for the model. So the default max, default max for the lower P is an order of five for your autoregressive component for that non-seasonal autoregressive component, and an order of two for the non-seasonal differencing component, and again another order of five for that non-seasonal moving average component. For the seasonal aspect of the model, it explores up to a maximum of two for the autoregressive component, a maximum order one for that differencing component for the seasonal uh, signal, and then again, a maximum of two for the moving average component of the seasonal signal. And so what this max P argument here is doing is forcing autoarema to go back to three seasonal cycles in the past and look at models with a p equals three. If we wanted to also make it look at the moving average that far back, we would go max, p, max q equals three as well. And obviously, if we wanted to force autoarema to look at more than five non-seasonal orders for the autoregressive, we would do something similar and just do max p equals 10. But we don't want that, so I'm gonna take that out. Goodbye. I'm gonna pull this out because all of our seasonal signals thus far have been in autoregressive. I don't see any point making it look at that at the moment. So we'll run this model and see what happens. Let's look at the summary. So I'm gonna type in the summary, autoarema underscore three, so I can look at the results of that model. And what we see is that indeed, it gives us a very similar model to what we had before with the two AR2 orders, the MA order, and two SAR orders, the seasonal autoregressive orders. But it has now added a third component to that seasonal AR component, which is this third annual cycle um, where it's picking up some autocorrelation structure and it was strong enough to have an impact on the fit of the model, despite the added complexity that adding that term adds to the model. Uh, let's see what the residuals look like on this. So we'll call the forecast package and the check residuals function, and we will give it our auto arema three model information and run that. Let's look down at this ACF graph down in the corner. And what we can see is that that third year signal of autocorrelation is now gone. It has been accounted for by the model. We still have this 28 month signal. I don't know what that is, um, but honestly, like there becomes a point where you can't chase down every single autocorrelation structure. I don't have a biological reason for why that's there. We do expect a certain number of spikes beyond uh, the distribution. And so honestly, if I was trying to fit a model, I'd probably just leave that for the time being. And frankly, if we look down at the young box test over in the console, we can see that our p-value for the residuals of this model is now not significant, indicating that we have done a good job of removing the autocorrelation structure from our residuals. So that's good news. Why don't you now take your RAIN time series object and run autoarema on it and check the ACF plot, see if you need to force that seasonal signal in your default autoarema model to be increased by uh, some number. And, uh, and then we'll meet back and talk about one other thing that you can do with these models.